Are you with us, Senator Blunt? I am with you. You're okay. with us. All right. Well, good morning be to better you. If I was, it'd be better if I was home and I was with you in the studio, but as it turns out, I'm with you in a pouring down rain in uh, Washington, and uh, it, that's uh, actually probably we ought to just talk about sports. Missouri sports are better right now than uh, anything you and I are likely to talk about. The okay, well, is, uh, well, we need your pick. How many games will it take the Cardinals to defeat the Dodgers? Well, it takes to beat the Dodgers. Yeah, how many games do the, the Cardinals, Cardinals need? Cardinals, the way the Cardinals do postseason, they, they take all of the games. <laughs> they use all of the games to create maximum excitement about uh, about the series. Uh, and I thought the game, I thought the other game, the game the other night with uh, the Feeney leaving Wainwright in with two out in the bottom of the eighth and letting the pitcher bat so he could finish the game was one of the classiest things I'd ever seen in baseball. Yeah. And then to get a get a three strikes on the last batter, uh, even uh, even better. I tell you, that young man can pitch, can, can he? I mean, it's unbelievable the number of pitches that he has. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. We need more pitches in Washington. We need a we need a good curveball thrower in Washington to figure out how to how to move on here, and uh, we'll see what happens in the next few days. Let me ask you this, Senator: uh, With all the government workers shut down, is the high, is the traffic a little bit better on Shirley Highway, or do you come in that way? You know, I don't come in that way. We, we live northwest of the capital in, in our house in Washington, where we really live, of course, is Springfield. But um, I don't come in that way. I um, I come from the northwest, and but there's less traffic. Though when it rains or snows at all in Washington, it's it's always like nobody's ever driven before. It's the most incredible thing um, you can believe. The wet, the way Washington drivers react to the weather apparently is the way to Congress and the White House now react to everything else, which we just can't seem to do the job that needs to be done to make things work. You know, Dave, I thought on the, on where we are on funding the government, the untold story still, we were at the very last day of the spending year, September the 30th, uh, and not a single appropriations bill had passed the Senate, and the majority leader had only brought one to the floor, and it was one he knew couldn't pass, so... Uh, of course, when you don't do your work, you're going to wind up with bad results. And this is the since Harry Reid became the majority leader, the appropriations process has not worked one single time the way it's supposed to work, where you debate pro- pass these bills one at a time, and sometime before September the 30th, you've decided how you're going to spend the money in the spending year that begins October 1, and that hasn't happened once, and it generally did always happen uh, in the time before that, before Harry Reid became the majority leader, and the whole place uh, just refuses to do the work that's supposed to be done. What do you think their long-term goal and objective is for President Obama? It seems to me like, from my point of view, that they're trying to do everything they can to just undermine basic values in America, which is thriftiness, paying your bills, being responsible. Uh, is, is everything you feel gravitating towards them trying to win the House back in 2014? I think that is Obama's dream scenario to have Nancy Pelosi as speaker again for two years. If that happens, assuming that the Republicans aren't the majority in the Senate yet, the Democrats in the Senate will immediately change the rules to where 51 votes can do anything that needs to be done, uh, and it will be Katie bar the door for two years of a of a majority of Democrats in the Senate, Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, and President. Obama uh, will have their way with what they want to get done, and I'm sure that's exactly what the president would like to see happen. Uh, he believed, and I actually thought that he was probably right in believing, that Republicans would be incredibly damaged by a shutdown, uh, and uh, the polling indicates that. You know, the good news is we have over a year before 
the next election, uh, and plenty of things can happen, and we've got to be sure that we're advocating policies that make sense to the American people of the fundamental values of the country. Well, Senator, you know, as you well know, you can make a poll say anything. I mean, if, if I were to poll 900 Democrats, I'm sure that it would show that the Republicans would go to I can tell you that sitting out here in the flyover part of the country, which is where you and I live, that that's not the way people feel. People feel the Republicans are doing the right thing for the long-term benefits of this country. And they, they applaud the efforts of what they're trying to do in the House is to do, try to bring some sanity back into this budget and all this deficit spending because, as you know, it's the cruelest form of taxation to continue to run these deficits. And printing all this money every month just undermines the value of the money that people have in their pocket. Which is why I've always thought that the debt limit was a better place to fight than whether the government was going to operate or not. The debate about how we're spending our money, and you know, if the if the House sends over a bill to raise the debt limit without any spending changes, as they said yesterday they were going to do, I'm highly unlikely to vote for that bill. I think the debt limit is the place to talk about how you change behavior, and uh, that still is what happens. Well, it's it's a sad commentary. I think most American people. You know, there, I know all of these CBS, ABC, and NBC polls are showing the Republicans uh, that people feel are the blame, but when somebody stands up like President Obama does and says, I will not negotiate, what part of the Constitution does he not understand that, that our whole system is built on more. compromise? I couldn't agree more, and uh, the idea that he won't negotiate, won't compromise, is, is a huge problem for the country, uh, and I think it'll be a problem for him. And that's one reason his numbers are also uh, going down. The Democrat numbers in the Congress are going down. Everybody's numbers are reflecting the fact that people aren't doing their job, and I've been saying that the whole two years I've been in the Senate, and, I, and only I've only been in the Senate two years, uh, but it's been two incredibly unsatisfying years because, again, we're not debating priorities, we're not bringing these things to the floor, the President refuses to lead. Uh, you know, the President, better than anybody else, Dave, is in a position to figure out what he is for that could happen, and then advocate, maybe it's a very small part of what he's for is the only thing that could happen, but this President's not willing to do that. It's he either wants everything he wants or he just as soon have uh, crisis and chaos. If you look at the record of the last five years of his presidency, it's been exactly that. The, the speech he gave two months ago on job number one focus of the federal government domestically was the same speech he gave five years ago. And it didn't happen two months ago, and it's not going to happen today because it's not a it's an agenda that can't happen uh, in uh, in the country today with um, Republicans still controlling at least the House of Representatives. Well, you know they they keep throwing out that well we just had an election and the American people made their well the American people also chose to keep the House in Republican hands and as you and I both know because you serve. Since 1996 in the House, all money budget, all resolutions on money comes out of the House. And that's the way the government was set up. And, and I don't, you know, it seems to me like he's just trying to create chaos. I mean, and of course, I felt that he's been that way since he's been in office. But, Senator, let me ask you this. What are the chances of us taking back control of the Senate next year in 2014? Well, the chances are, are good. We have a number of uh, Democrats in the Senate in states that the president didn't come close to carrying, whose seats are up. Uh, this year, uh, and um, five of those Democrats have, have five Democrats have decided to retire. Three in states that the president didn't get 42 percent of the vote on uh, vote in, and two in states that the president carried, but in an off-year election, uh, they're going to be reelecting Republican governors in Michigan and, and Iowa. And uh, I think there's a real opportunity for us to uh, get the six seats that we would need to be. 
in the in the majority. But the point for today is we're not in the majority, and uh, we the country would be better if you had a Republican House, a Republican Senate, uh, trying to work to put things on the president's desk the last two years he's president that he has to sign. You know, there's a reason we call the the president the executive. His job is to execute the laws passed by the Congress, not to decide which laws he likes and which laws he doesn't like or how he thinks the money should be spent. He can certainly propose and lead in all of that, but your point's exactly right. The Congress, and particularly the House of Representatives, is the place where the Constitution says we set our spending priorities, and both the Senator Reid and President Obama have stood in the way of that normal priority process working uh, for all the time President Obama has been president. Is, is Harry Reid the primary reason why we haven't had a budget? In how many years has it been since we've had a budget? Well, the Senate did pass a budget for the first time in uh, six or seven years this year, but they passed a budget. The Democrats in the Senate passed a budget. It was almost $100 billion beyond what the law, the Budget Control Act, which is the one, one big spending accomplishment for conservatives in the last few years. They passed a, a budget that was so far outside the money that could legally be spent that there was no reason to go to the House and try to have a real negotiation on what a real budget would look like. But during that period of time, there were actually moments when Senator Reid said things that were almost exactly uh, making the point. And one day he said, we'd just be foolish to tell people what we were for before the election. And, of course, if I was for what Senator Reid was for, that would be my view maybe, too. But that's that's the reason they don't want to debate the spending bills. That's the reason they don't want to have a budget that could make sense. Uh, and it's one of the big reasons that the system have, has devolved in the kind of chaos that by the time the spending year starts, none of the work has been accomplished that's supposed to be done. Um, the Republican House passed bills that are sitting there waiting for the Senate to take up, but only one person in the Senate can bring a bill to the Senate floor, and that's the majority leader. That's why the majority needs to change. You know, we're seeing now, too, that uh, this health care, this Obamacare or Affordable Care Act, whatever you care to call it, has run into massive problems, and I, I think we've spent hundreds of millions of dollars of trying to make it work uh, what do you think the outcome is going to be on uh, on this health care thing going forward? Uh, it, it, I know that the and as you because you were in the leadership in the House when you were there, uh, and someone as I was talking to a friend of mine who's on staff up there that he said, well, you know, the House can just defund it. Of course, you know, they can send over bills to the Senate, uh, which they just defund Obamacare. Of course, the Senate, as you have pointed out, would not pass it but they can continue to do that. But what do you think the outcome is going to be on this health care thing? Because to us sitting out here in the flyover part of the country, it just looks like total chaos. It does. Well, I think it, I think it will be chaos. And actually, you can't defund Obamacare any more than you can defund Social Security. Obamacare is largely funded through the it, – it's, it's, it's a mandatory program. So that's why when the government has no money to operate in the normal discretionary budget that you vote on, Obamacare is still being launched. Now, it's a horrible launch. I mean, clearly they're unprepared to make this work. Uh, but something like 97% of all the money that's spent under Obamacare is not appropriated money any more than we appropriate Social Security or Medicare. To change Obamacare, you've got to change the law which, of course, means the president has to sign it or there have to be 67 senators who'd override his veto. Uh, so the defunding Obamacare is not possible. A lim- a, a, a repealing Obamacare would be possible, but defunding is not possible any more than defunding Social Security is possible. Okay. Because it's the law, and the money is going to be spent unless you change the mandatory spending program. Uh, and that's, that's the – but I think now, let's get back to the other question. 
can, can this possibly work? I don't think so, and I've never thought so. It's based on premises that can't work. Uh, getting insu- not needing you know, being able to get insurance once you're sick uh, is is sounds good, uh, but it, it it runs contrary to the whole idea of insurance. If you can get insurance when you're sick. Why would you get insurance when you were well? And for insurance to work, you got a lot of you got to have a lot of well people paying insurance. So the few people that are sick benefit from that that income from all the people who are not sick. And then the other the other false premise: young, healthy people under this plan are asked to buy insurance at rates that are astronomical compared to any rate they've ever paid before. And of course, the biggest uninsured group. Uh, was young, healthy people because they were young and healthy and thought they probably wouldn't need insurance, and generally they were right. But, of course, now they have to pay a penalty. Uh, I think one of the places where we really have a, a strong argument right now is eliminating this penalty for at least as long as the president has eliminated the penalty for employers. You know, the president's taken the position that corporations and businesses are going to get another year to offer insurance before they pay a penalty, but individuals would have to pay a penalty right now. I don't know how you could possibly defend that, uh, and particularly with a system where you can't even make the website work to sign up if you want to get insurance off the exchanges. Uh, so I, I think this will not work. I have, I have been uh, – the government running 16% of the economy is a bad thing, but the government – putting itself in the place of, of being involved in health care decisions for American individuals and families is an even worse thing. If you want to really change the relationship between government and the people, uh, the, the biggest and quickest way to do that is get involved in a family's health care and let some government bureaucrat be involved in that in any way. And it's... Uh, I think this system will not work, and the quicker the American people know that, the quicker we can get to the point of actual repealing the law, uh, which a president would have to sign, and it probably won't be this president. Well, you know, Senator, we really appreciate you taking the time and being on the cell phone in the rain in Washington, and it's always great to hear from you. I think a lot of your comments are right on, and uh, we appreciate your service. And please come in the studio if you can the next time you're in Springfield. Well, I like to come to the studio and I hope to be with uh, in the studio uh, soon. Thanks for what you all do every day.